Hello, everyone. The news about the war in Ukraine continues to be dominated by the story about the uh, destruction of the Children's Hospital in Kiev, as well as other attacks that were carried out at the same time. While quite a lot of the children and their parents uh, managed to get out of there, they were evacuated, um, roughly half of the building had collapsed as the result of the strike. Uh, they're saying it was a direct hit by a missile. So it is very likely that we have bodies or possibly still living people trapped under the rubble. Uh, in addition to that particular attack, uh, there's search and rescue operations taking place in Dnipro, Kriviri, Slavyansk, and Kramator. That particular hospital was the largest children's hospital in Ukraine, uh, carrying out uh, around 7,000 surgeries annually um, and providing tre treatment for um, a wide variety of illnesses, um, including autoimmune disease, diseases, uh, cancer, etc. One uh, Russian activist said that the hospital deserved it because it provides paid services. You are free to draw your own conclusion from that. Uh, this piece is from Kiev Post or Kiev Independent, but um, they provide, they usually mm -hmm. provide a really good um, summary across the board of what we're looking at in terms of damages and casualties. So, um, over 200 civilian casualties um, after the mass attack on Kiev. Um, in addition to the Children's Hospital, there was another hospital that was also hit. In Kriviri, we have 10 killed, 47 injured, uh, one dead in Dnipro. And um, Ukraine had called for an emergency UN meeting. Um, and I don't know whether that's going to do anything, honestly, because through this entire thing, UN had proven itself to be utterly impotent. In addition to reproaching Ukrainian soldiers who were basically forced into conducting urban warfare, um, that's along with that now infamous report by Amnesty International, UN had failed to do anything, literally anything, to censure Russia um, including withdrawing any type of privileges, um, kicking it out of the Security Council, and kicking it out of the UN altogether because it had violated basically a whole bunch of uh, points in the UN Charter. What is the point of having an organization with a charter with some types of rules and um, some type of code of ethics if there is no repercussions for violating those rules and that code. Another meeting in the works is a big NATO meeting. Uh, and of course, the war in Ukraine and the conflict in the Middle East are both going to be front and center. Remember what I told you? The only person Erdogan is interested in is Erdogan. And of course, he felt the need, need to... Um, warn NATO about getting involved. Unfortunately, he's a little late for that because NATO is already involved because, first of all, a number of NATO members are providing aid to Ukraine, including military training, supplies, and weapons. So NATO is already involved. And um, as I mentioned before, there are many parallels with World War II the question is, of course, are we going to see people pulling together against common enemy or are they just going to sit on their ass? At this point, a lot of Western leaders, you know, express their outrage, etc., etc. However, Ukraine is still bogged down by some restrictions as to using Western weapons against military targets on the Russian territory. So a lot of people are talking the talk, but are unwilling to walk the walk. Fortunately, sometimes 
private citizens are better than their governments and their officials. BBC today talks about just one such citizen, a young man who went to Ukraine early on and spent his time there saving hundreds of people from the front lines. Unfortunately, Chris Perry was killed in January 2023. There's now a documentary about him and about his work in Ukraine. But what it goes to show is that there is still some hope in the world about just people. I myself have been working with um, independent, non-government spo sponsored organization in Ukraine. It's basically all grassroots. Um, it has its own YouTube channel, although they've been a little bit busy and haven't had a lot of time to post um, videos there. But over the years, we managed to raise money for you name it. Um, what have we done? Tank repairs, uh, armored vehicles, portable showers, food. Um, during winter, we had um, actually a small campaign that uh, uh, bought heated socks and gloves for the soldiers. And the list goes on and on and on. It, you know literally everything from the smallest to the largest item that an army might need. We raise money for that and shall continue doing so. We're not waiting for our governments to get off their asses and do the right thing. Just saying. In a statement following the attack on Kiev, uh, Vitaly Klitschko, the mayor of Kiev, said that what Russia is doing there is genocide. And I agree with him. Here is something UN has forgotten. This is UN's own definition of ge genocide. Let's walk down the list, shall we? Killing members of a certain group. Check. Causing serious bodily or mental harm to members of the group. Check. Deliberately inflicting conditions of life calculated to bring about the group's physical destruction. Check. Imposing measures intending to prevent births within the group. Check considering Russians are destroying children's hospitals and maternity wards. And besides, what woman would want to have a baby in the middle of a war? The last but not the least, forcibly transferring children of the group to another group. Check and check 11,000 times. This is genocide. 